1,000. Everything on the line, and here we go. Jake Moody sends it away. Xavier Johnson back deep. He'll get a shot. Brings it up from his five-yard line. Continues to run, and he'll get close to Jigba. Second down and 10 of the 19. Here's Stroud looking again. Throws, and he finds his receiver on the far side. Written out of bounds. Close to that first down marker. And it was caught by Cade Stover defensively for the Wolverines. Well, this defense has got to be able to stop the run and put pressure on the quarterback with their safeties over the top. That puts an immense amount of pressure on their interior. Mozzie Smith, to be specific, he's got to be a huge player in this game. And then Mike Morris, how effective he's going to be, did not play against Illinois a week ago. He's their best pass rusher. And in the secondary, how they defend Marvin Harrison will be a big point throughout the game. Third down and one at the 28. And they'll run it with Mayan Williams. He picks up the first down. Gain of five. Junior Colson with the tackle. Ohio State getting to the line of scrimmage quickly. First down at the 33. Williams remains in the backfield. And a flag. False start. Offense number 77. Remains first down. That's Paris Johnson Jr., the left tackle. Now, when you start trying to increase the tempo a little bit and go at a quicker pace, sometimes those offensive linemen, they just get a little head start. There you see Paris Johnson, that little flinch, and it's called, and they'll move back five yards. That'll make it first down and 15 at the 28. the handoff over the right side it's Xavier Johnson Johnson with running room picks up a first down and more as he gets close to midfield that's a gain of 19 Chris Jenkins with the tackle well Xavier Johnson has some explosive ability he had a long touchdown run against Indiana in this stadium just a couple of weeks ago about 70 yards and shows a little movement there as well Buckeyes stay on the ground this time it's Stratum and Michael Barrett with the tackle. They need as many running backs to contribute as possible. Well, and that's Chip Trainum. He's a transfer from Arizona State that was a linebacker basically to start the year. And now he's moved back to running back where he does have some history throughout his career. And they've been trying to get him healthy because Travion Henderson is not healthy. So not playing today. And it'll be running back by committee, in particular with Mayan Williams also nursing that leg injury, Gus, like you stated earlier. Second down and seven near side throw caught. Close to another first down for the Buckeyes. Emeka Abuka this time, and he's had a sensational season. He's close, about a half yard short. And speaking with Brian Hartline, the wide receiver coach, before the game, he said Emeka is feeling as healthy as he has been in weeks. So expect him to be a high producer here today. Opening series for Ohio State, third down and one. Stroud backing up, throws to the far side. Marvin Harrison Jr. Made the catch with one hand. Wow. 19 yards. He's open when he is not open. That's the mark of a great player. Coverage all over him. This is DJ Turner in coverage. And watch Marvin. He's going to fight right here and then just drop out and catch it with one arm. That's, that's sensational stuff. First and 10 to the 25 for Ohio State. And they'll run it. Train him. Slicing through the Michigan defense. Gained seven yards, Mozzie Smith, Michael Barrett combining. But Ohio State on their opening series having no problems moving the ball. And remember, this game has not been played in this stadium since 2018, Gus. And you can see, you can feel it and sense it from this crowd. I'm actually wondering why Michigan deferred after winning the toss. You would not want to put this offense on the field because they are getting this crowd into it early. Second down and three at the 18. And they'll hand it off. Train him, stutter step, gets through the hole, down at the five. A gain of 12. Great block on the outside. That was Xavier Johnson who had that little reverse earlier. And Trainum comes in here getting really his first touches of the season in the game, doing a great job. Ohio State again on the ground, not as much this time. As Trainum stacked up at the line of scrimmage, Rob Moore 
first man to it. You know, last year Michigan did a great job of, of holding Ohio State to a couple of field goals and red zone possessions. One of those possessions was a first and goal opportunity. You know, watch for Michigan to pull out some new defenses and some maybe some tricks on defense and try to force Ohio State to settle for a field goal. They would just think that was a huge win. When talking to Jesse Mentor, the defensive coordinator. 11th play of the drive that started at the 19. Second down and goal at the five. Stroud underneath. This time, Stover, the big fella, leans forward. And he'll get inside that five-yard line, a one-yard gain. Will Johnson with the tack. And this is a huge play. Last week against Illinois, Gus Michigan stemmed late and forced Illinois into a, a procedure penalty, a false start. We'll see if they do that again here. A false start here would be deadly. Third down and goal at the four. Trainum remains at running back. Stroud drops back, sets, and so touchdown, Emeka Aboka. Ohio State marches down the field on their opening series, punches Michigan in the mouth to take a six to nothing lead. They're so concerned with Marvin Harrison Jr. Watch the safety. He's going to put his eyes all over Harrison Jr. on the outside. That allows single coverage for Emeka Obuka, who runs across the field and beats Mike Sainrasil for the touchdown. Noah Ruggles in for the extra point. And it's good. Ohio State, 12 plays, covering 81 yards. They score in almost five minutes to take a 7-0 lead over Michigan in the game. Fielding ready to send it away. And this one out of the end zone for touchback. That'll bring on J.J. McCarthy. Needless to say, folks, this is the biggest game of this young man's life. Well, when you come to Michigan as a five-star recruit and you're a quarterback, you're brought here to win this game. And with questions at running back and Blake Corum being right next to him, and how is that knee going? This game is going to come down to J.J. McCarthy, how effective he can be and how good he can be throwing the ball. Michigan in the loud end of the stadium. J.J. McCarthy. First down and 10 of the 25. Blake Corum standing right next to him. McCarthy. Throwing it off first down. Bounces out of the pocket. And he'll deliver incomplete. Tommy Eichenberg chasing. Let's take a look at the Michigan offense. Well, this offensive line really owned the game a year ago. 297 yards on the ground in large part due to how physical they were and how well they played. Then on the outside, obviously Blake Quorum. We're going to see what's going on there. Expect a rotation of backs in that backfield with Quorum, even guys like Donovan Edwards, C.J. Stokes, but it's going to come down to who can make a play in the passing game. They're on the first snap of the game. They went to the air. Second down and 10 of the 25. Here's Quorum testing out that knee. And Quorum spins forward, gains four, Lathan Ransom defensively for Ohio State. And here's a look at the Bucks on D. This game ended up being personal for this group a year ago they were physically dominated Gus this is largely the same group of players maybe a couple of differences Tanner McAllister at safety Michael Hall at defensive tackle how they answer the bell physically will tell you everything about how successful they'll be here early in this game Michigan facing a third down and six at the 29 Donovan Edwards number seven in the backfield now. He's explosive, but he's playing with a hand injury. McCarthy rolls out, throws on the move underneath, and it's caught for first down for Michigan. Cornelius Johnson with a 12-yard gain. Well, I thought J.J. was going to take off and run it. Probably could have gotten there either way, but finds Cornelius Johnson. Watch all the space in front of J.J. McCarthy as he leaves the pocket 
This guy is dangerous with his legs, obviously. A great athlete. Dumps it off to Johnson, and they move the sticks. That is a big first down for Michigan just to get themselves settled down in this game. First down at the 41. Corum the pistol back. And they'll give it to him straight ahead. Blake Corum hopping through the hole. And they'll pick up two yards on the play. Ohio State game tackling Vincent finally brings him down. And Corum did not look right trying to cut off that left leg. That's where the brace is. And he'll hobble off and shake his head. And now we'll get another running back in for Michigan. That's the, that's the problem is his ability to cut laterally right there. Planting that left foot in the ground and trying to explode up the field. And you can tell he is just not right. Donovan Edwards replaces it. Second and eight at the 43. Opening series for Michigan. McCarthy with time delivers D. And incomplete. Nobody home. Closest man to the football, Ronnie Bell. And that's been an issue for J.J. McCarthy this year. Throwing the deep ball. And that one looks like it was a miscommunication there with Ronnie Bell. And now another third down situation. Now this one more of an obvious passing situation. That brings up these pass rushers. JT Tuimolo'au and Zach Harrison have been getting better and better all year. And Michigan will have to face this raucous crowd in the shoe. Third down and eight at the 43. McCarthy bounces out, looking, directing, throws off his back foot, caught, Ronnie Bell down at the Ohio State 25, that's a gain of 32. Well again, J.J. gets out of the pocket, now what you don't normally see on film from J.J. McCarthy is the ability to scramble to his left, he does it here, and then he directs traffic, points Ronnie Bell to take off deep, and Denzel Burke Looks like he slipped, fell down, and Bell was wide open. Now two third down conversions from J.J. McCarthy. The game could not be starting any better for the young Michigan quarterback. Roddy Bell went over the 2,000-yard mark in his career, receiving last week against Illinois. First and 10 of the 24. Play fake. McCarthy in trouble, and McCarthy gets rid of it incomplete. Ohio State bringing backside pressure. Cody Simon. The officials are going to talk about this because the offensive lineman was the first one to touch this. Now Donovan Edwards was over there. Watch Edwards as he takes off left. Great pressure from Ohio State. Cody Simon right in his face, Gus, as you said, and McCarthy in the grasp just tried to turn and chuck it towards Edwards. Punch number nine. Quarterback was in the pocket. There was no receiver in the area. The penalty has lost it down at the spot of the foul. Second down. I give a lot of credit there to Jim Knowles. He designed that. Now, last week against Illinois, one of the things that Illinois did that gave Michigan trouble, Gus, was when Michigan got in those tight bunch sets, like you just saw there from the tight ends, Illinois would bring pressure. And it really affected Michigan's ability to get on the edge and execute out of those formations. Ohio State does the same thing the first time they see it there. Jim Knowles, the new defensive coordinator for Ohio State, with an excellent little dialed-up game plan for J.J. McCarthy here early. Coach Knowles coming over from Oklahoma State. So that'll make it second down and 25 at the Ohio State 39-yard line. Now they move it inside the 35 to the 34. Second down and 20. McCarthy out of the shotgun. Here's J.J. McCarthy, sets, fires sideline, incomplete. That ball thrown high for Kanigas Johnson. Third down and 20 at the 34. J.J. McCarthy steps into his throw underneath. Caught 
A.J. Henning, but he's brought down quickly. Terrific swarming defense by Ohio State. Only a three-yard gain. Cameron Brown making the tackle. Good coverage on this crossing route. Michigan really majors in those crossing routes, in particular on third down. This one was long yardage, but again, it was more about this field goal opportunity, Gus. Jake Moody. That last second 35-yard field goal last week, which is the game winner against Illinois. He comes in to attempt one from 49 yards away. That one up. Nice draw. And good. Michigan on the board. Jake Moody remains red hot. Six. And Moody sends it away. Johnson. The start from the six. Johnson looking for a lane, has one, crosses the 25, and gets close to the 30-yard line, a 22-yard return, Colston Loveland with the tackle. Let's take a look at the current Big Ten standing sponsored by Discover. Well, we know what this game is all about here, 11-0 and 11-0. In the West, because of that loss for Iowa yesterday to Nebraska, that means the battle for the old Oaken Bucket, Purdue and uh, Indiana, if Purdue wins that, Gus, then Purdue will go to Indianapolis and face the winner of this game in the Big Ten Championship. And don't forget to tune in to the Big Ten Championship game presented by Discover December 3rd on Fox. First down and 10 at the 28. Second series for Ohio State. Stroud out wide. He has his man, Abuka, cuts it back, picks up a first and more and a flag. Somebody grabbed his face mask. May have been Junior Colson. It's a 17-yard gain in the penalty coming up. I think it was Colson. You're exactly right as he was flying out to the outside. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 25. We'll add 15 yards to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Seems like Ohio State's strategy early is to make... Michigan play out wide in space. That's right. And they're trying to take the, the game away from that front seven and get their athletes going. Really, this game can come down to styles. Michigan wants to play a very specific style of football game, a suffocating, run-oriented game. They were able to do that a year ago. Ohio State wants to play a wide open, fast style of game. And right now, the terms of the game are being dictated by the Buckeyes. 17-yard gain, 15-yard penalty from the 40 now. They run it. Williams to the near side, tackle at the 30. Mike Sane was still got him, but it's a gain of nine. Michigan with no answers offensively, well, defensively rather for this Ohio State offense. They're running it and throwing it. Yeah, and this is the, the, the place on the field, in particular when they're running the ball well, where Ryan Day loves to give those token little fakes and then try to get somebody loose in the back end of the defense. Second down, it's short. They need two. Play fake, Stroud, looking. And it's Fleming with the catch. Another first down in front of D.J. Turner. That's a six-yard pickup. When this offense gets to play with a little pace, a little tempo, and on the edge, it helps their run game get going. That obviously helps their play-action pass. And it also does another thing. It slows down the pass rush. Watch how clean the pocket is right now for C.J. Stroud. He's just sitting in there and being able to survey the entire field, make his decision, and then throw the ball accurately. So far, Stroud, 7 of 8, 63 yards and a touchdown with a long of 19. First down and 10 of the 25. Another play-action fake. Looking for a screen. Stroud. Now, dances outside the pocket, striding, decides to run it and goes out of bounds at the 20. Well, you're wondering why didn't he try to throw that ball downfield or even downfield away out of bounds. It's because they were setting up a screen. He had linemen downfield, Gus. He couldn't also throw the ball past the line of scrimmage. That's a smart play, and he gained a few yards right there and was able to get out of bounds. What makes C.J. Stroud such a great player? Well, it starts with what I just said. He makes really good decisions. He's a very intelligent player. He's got great feet in the pocket, and he's fundamentally sound when he throws the ball because he anticipates windows, and he's hyper-accurate. When you put all that together with a great core of wide receivers, then you get one of the best players in America. Second and five. Here's the run game. Williams tumbling. Michael Baird 
grabs him after a three yard pickup. Well, these third and shorts become so huge. Jim Harbaugh knows it. Ryan Day knows it. Buckeyes this year have not been as good converting in short yardage third down situations in the run game. Previous years, they've been outstanding. This year, they're 100th or worth 105th in college football in short yard, third down, short yardage situation running the ball. So we'll see what they go with here. Ohio State, second scoring offense in the nation. Eighth total offense. And it's Williams. First down, Buckeyes. Well, how about Donovan Jackson and Paris Johnson? You need to get some movement. Watch this double team out on the left side. They get the movement necessary, and that's where Mayan Williams puts his head down and finds that yard that he needs, and he ultimately gets the line to gain with that little spin, and he's able to move the chains. First and 10 of the 15. Stroud, Johnson, looking for running room this time. Michigan ready. Maybe a yard on the play. Harold, Michael Barrett, Makari Page combining on the tackle. Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, he was talking to me this week about four-point plays. Defensively in the red zone, can you come up with the play that forces Ohio State to settle for a field goal? He says he's been holding coverages, holding blitzes to show something to C.J. Stroud that he's never seen. Ohio State 65 yards rushing already. They only rushed for 64 yards in last year's game. Second and nine of the 14. Williams crunching forward. No gain on the play. Mason Graham plugging up the hole. And this is one of those times. This is the time on the Michigan side for Jesse Minter to give one of those four-point play calls, something that this team hasn't seen. And look at Ohio State up at the line of scrimmage, quickly snapping the ball. Third down and nine. Stroud looking with time. Incomplete. So the Michigan defense will hold Emeka Abuka, the intended receiver. And the Buckeyes send out the field goal unit. Well, that was an interesting strategy because Ryan Day tried to quickly get to the line of scrimmage so that Michigan couldn't get into one of those specialty calls. But his quarterback receiver missed there. Little tangle up with the legs. He goes down, and now they'll settle for that field goal. Noah Ruggles, three for three with a long of 47 against Maryland last week. This one from 32 yards away. Got it up, and good. Ten and Wilson with the first and ten of the 25. They give it to Stokes looking for a hole. He tumbles, picks up two yards. Ty Hamilton with the ankle tackle. Let's go downstairs to Mr. Rinaldi. Well, had the opportunity to speak to James Corum, Blake's father, last night. He said he knew that Blake would want to play in this game and would check with doctors within the program and beyond and was assured that he would not suffer any additional injury if he was able to go. But the worry about that explosion, that lateral movement, we could see the frustration on Blake Corum. We'll see how much he's able to get into this game, guys. You know no one wants to be in this game more than he does. Second down and eight. Michigan running it again with C.J. Stokes. Blake Corum with the heart of a lion and a heart of gold as well. Tommy Eichenberg with the tackle. Three-yard gain. Michigan facing a third down and five. And already their third, big third down. And J.J. is going to be asked to make another play. The first two that they were able to convert, he was able to scramble, get outside the pocket, and may not have to snap it here with 10 on the game clock. Third down and five. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. Ohio State. J.J. McCarthy looking underneath and complete. That one thrown high for Ronnie Bell. He couldn't haul it in. And the Wolverines will have to send it away. Well, Ronnie Bell is the target that they want to get the ball to. 
And McCarthy, when he does struggle, he does miss high. Ronnie's got the cushion. He's wide open. That ball's got to be down on his frame. And McCarthy can get going a little bit. Best remember, he's just a young player, a young man, only 19 years old. And sometimes the adrenaline gets the best of him, and he can miss high on those passes where he's trying to drive it out in particular outside the numbers. Brad Robbins will punt it away from the 16. Ameka Abuka standing at the 25. High spiraling kick. Abuka to the sideline. And it's caught at the 30. Stroud checks it down. Stove with the tight end. And he's upended at the 35. This time by Will Johnson. Six yard gain. And again, Gus, on the perimeter. You can tell that the entire game plan for Ohio State is get that ball on the perimeter as quickly as they can. 135 yards in total offense so far for the Buckeyes. Mayan Williams spinning. Trying to get that first down. Looks like he has it. Once they can get the ball on the perimeter, what they can do is they can get into their quick tempo, and that's when they run the ball their most successful. And they're just stagnant and trying to run into the middle of the line. They're not great running the ball, but when they've got that tempo, it's pretty good. Stroud spreading out, avoiding Michigan defenders. Hits Fleming on the sideline for a seven-yard gain. C.J. Stroud, so clever, this young man, from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Second and three. Near side. They swing it out again. Abuka with a lane. Ameka Abuka breaks it inside Michigan territory for game 11. Makari Page with the tackle. And Rod Moore, number 19. Watch him overrun the play. Number 19, he's trying to get outside. Samer still is taking on the block of Stover. And Moore just outran the play. First out at the 42. Stroud. All day to throw the ball. Stroud now delivers to the sideline. And this will be Stover. And he'll lose three yards on the play. Rod Moore with the tackle. Excellent coverage down the field. But that protection, boy, this is not what we saw last year. When we did this game a year ago, Gus Stroud was under pressure the entire day from those guys like Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo. Second and 13 at the 45. If he's got time, he will shred you. He just, he, he's too clever, he's too smart, he's too accurate. They'll hand it off to Williams. Stretch play. Williams with a hole. And he's clipped and taken down at the 40 by Mike Sainer still. Still positive yardage, this time eight. This is a big play here on a third down. This Michigan defense a bit on their heels, but a chance to get off the field on a third down. Third down and five. Williams the pistol back. Ohio State playing fast here in the first half. And right now, Ryan Day sees that Michigan's in man coverage. You got man coverage in number 18 out there. Watch out. Marvin Harrison Jr. Here's the handoff looking for five, and they won't get it. They get three. Mason Graham keeps them from getting to the first down marker. Now Ohio State with a decision to make on fourth down and two. Yeah, I think the decision was made before third down. That's why they ran the ball on that third down, making a shorter try here on fourth, and the offense will stay on the field. Bigger personnel in there. Mitch Rossi, 34, checks in the game of fullback. Fourth down and two at the Michigan 34. For Ohio State, out of the eye, Williams the deep man. Play fake, Stroud looking, Stroud delivers! Incomplete on fourth down. Jalen Harrell in coverage, Cade Stover just for Michigan. And Edwards chopped down, wow, nicely done to Imolowal. That's a loss of one. JT Tuimolo had the game of his life against Penn State. No, oh, did he ever. My goodness, he had, well, he batted a ball down that led to an interception. He had two interceptions himself. One of them he took back to the house. What, he had three sacks in that game? This guy was a one-man wrecking crew late in that game against the Nittany Lions, and that's one of the marquee wins that this Buckeye team has. He was named the National Defensive Player of the Week after that performance. Second and 11. 
from the 33. McCarthy under pressure and that ball deflected. Major pressure. Zach Harrison got a hand on it, knocked it down. Well, here's Harrison. He's going to come on the inside move. And so as he works to the inside, McCarthy's trying to throw that ball to his left, and he just gets that big hand right up at the throw spot and is able to bat it away. Harrison has been playing the best football of his life here late in the season. The pressure has been increasing. He only has three sacks, but Gus, his quarterback pressures have gone up and up and up, 28 now on the season. And that one puts Michigan well behind the sticks on a third and obvious passing situation. Had a chance to spend some time with Zach at the Ohio State lunchroom yesterday. What an engaging young man. Third down and 11 at the 33. Here's McCarthy stepping up, delivers a deep ball, and it is incomplete. Colston Loveland, the target. And that will force the Wolverines to punt it away. Just not the style of game that Michigan is comfortable playing or that J.J. McCarthy is comfortable playing. This is a team that has to rely on their ground game. Without quorum, they haven't had much of it. The offensive line has not been as dominant as what they were able to be a year ago. And because of that, this is becoming a J.J. McCarthy game. And we're seeing a young player struggle in the face of a very raucous crowd and an intense pass rush from the opponent. Back to back three and outs for Michigan. Brad Robbins, a weapon from the 19. Abuka comes up and he has it at the 21 yard line. Aiden in the backfield. The talented freshman from Memphis. Here's Stroud underneath. He has his man and this is G. Scott Jr with a 16-yard gain. Well, Michigan's going to leave this area of the field wide open because they're going to just come back and blitz on that outside. Stroud, again, recognizes. Gus, this is what I'm talking about of intelligence. He knows where the defense is moving. When he has a beat on what you're doing, he knows where to go with the ball. That's an easy pitch and catch and an easy first down. He's been going to his tight ends often in this first half. First and 10 of the 38. Play fake. Stroud steps up, moving around, and incomplete. Would have been a tough catch in traffic for Marvin Harrison Jr. DJ Turner right there. Well, he had come into this game with 99 targets, zero drops on the year. That's his first drop on the year. Over 100 targets now, certainly one that he feels like he's going to walk back. DJ Turner was kind of there, but certainly Harrison can catch that in any normal circumstances and C.J. Stroud knows it. Disappointment on the face of C.J. Stroud, second and 10 of the 38. Hayden. And Hayden gets through the hole, but Jalen Harrell is there. Hayden picking up five. Well, Harrell after that fourth down stop and pass coverage on Cade Stover with a nice tackle on the edge there on second down and here you go Michigan's an opportunity to try to get off the field again Stroud when you blitz him you leave areas open they've tried to blitz a couple of times and they've been hurt do they just play with coverage and can they get any pressure with just a four-man rush third and five of the 43 empty backfield CJ Stroud backpedaling near side incomplete and Michigan will get off the field again Michigan bringing pressure. Xavier Johnson, the intended receiver. Well, it was just a four-man rush, and really it was about Mozzie Smith and his ability to get pressure. Watch as he's going to work outside, then come back to the inside. Good outside move and good strength from Mozzie Smith as he's able to get Stroud backpedaling in the pocket, and then the ball just outside of the reach of Xavier Johnson, and Ohio State will have to punt it. Jesse Mirko from the 29. A.J. Henning standing inside his own 10. This one's line drive kick. Henning lets it bounce, continues to roll. Touched at the goal line. Back-to-back -back to -back three and outs for Michigan. J.J. McCarthy hands it off. Running room, Donovan Edwards, who's playing with that injured hand. We'll pick up two yards. Yeah, you see that big cast that he's got on that right hand. It's 
troublesome for him because he's so good catching it out of the backfield. That's one of his biggest strengths and one of the things that Michigan really uses to attack the defense. Not really available to him today. And you can see the ball security that might be an issue when he's in the interior as a ball carrier. Second and eight. Edwards again, and Edwards grabbed in the backfield. He'll be tackled for a loss. Guess who? JT Tuimoloa. It's Molo, like Rolo, folks. That's how they tell us to pronounce it. Well, he's been playing terrific so far, and this entire defense has thus far. Michigan completely unable to run the ball. They've run the ball now eight times for zero yards. This Ohio State defense took last year personally. 297 yards rushed against them. They came in here wanting to prove a point, and they have so far. Third down and nine. McCarthy under pressure, back shoulder throw, caught. Cornelius Johnson breaking it, still on his feet. Cornelius Johnson spreading. Touchdown, Michigan, 69 yards. And McCarthy just calmly stepped back through a little fade away, hits Cornelius Johnson, and then it's the missed tackle. When you send everybody, there is nobody to help. Cam Brown misses the tackle, and it's a touchdown for Michigan. My, how the tables turn on one snap. Ohio State had played brilliant defense so far today, and in one snap of the football, it all changes. Extra point up and good. I had a chance to run into Cornelius Johnson's dad, big brother. They thought that he'd have a chance to have a big game today, and what a big touchdown. C.J. all the way. 10-10, Michigan, Ohio State. A lightning strike from Cornelius Johnson. Gets down the sidelines, and it's a touchdown, and this game just feels like it has flipped, and all the air left out of this building. Let's go downstairs and check in with Tom. Couldn't agree more, Joel. Tale of two sidelines right now. This Michigan sideline just erupted and ignited. Needed that play like oxygen. You can see the passion. On the other side, talk to Ryan Day before the game as he arrived here. And he said this team needs to execute beyond the emotion because emotion can dictate how you play. Seeing some of that tension now creep into that sideline in terms of body language and the way players are communicating with each other. First moment, a real challenge here for the Buckeyes. They stress their toughness as a new form of their identity. We'll see how that manifests, guys, being tested now. Well, certainly tested, Tom, and, and that's when teams have to rely on their leaders. And who's your leader? It's C.J. Stroud. This is the type of series he's got to come out, be sharp, be focused, and be accurate with the football. He'll start from his own 30-yard line. Train him in the game at running back. Train him. Breaks it up. Train him with room. Train him. Finally goes down. After a gain of 24 yards, Rod Moore with the saving tackle. Boy, when you pop a run like that, this is when Ryan Day loves to get in the quick tempo and start to take shots down the field as soon as he crosses the 50. First down and 10 at the Michigan, 46. Stroud, sideline throw. Whoa, what a throw. He just dropped that in to Marvin Harrison Jr. An 18-yard gain for number 18. You can't cover this much better than Sainer still does, but that's just a perfect throw and a great catch from Marvin Harrison Jr. That's what makes them so dangerous as a quarterback-wide receiver battery. Stroud's accuracy is off the charts, guys. I mean, this guy is hyper-accurate and plays with great anticipation. Harrison, second catch, train him. And Michael Barrett with the tackle after a four-yard game. We saw this during the Penn State game. Ohio State at Penn State. Second half, they came out and scored on one drive in three plays. It was just like bam, bam, bam. Yeah, this is a team that really excels in points, uh, punches and bunches. So you steal a boxing reference from you. It's an avalanche of points where they can get going and then 
two, three, four, five series in a row, potentially score a touchdown. It's a rhythm offense, and they certainly seem to have it now. Second and six, that's a 24. And a flag. False start. Offense number 79. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Well, you talk about that rhythm, and then immediately Dewan Jones just flinches at right tackle, and that will take you right out of that rhythm. And again, Ryan Day loves to get the ball on the edge, use the quick tempo, try to get to the stretch zone running game, and then take shots down the field. But when you get backed up behind the chains, you can't do that. Second down and 11. Stroud guns it underneath and broken up. Incomplete. Intended for Ibuka, but Rod Moore got a hand in there, dislodging the football. Good coverage from Moore. Physical at the point of attack. Good look from the ump cam right here as he looks back, and right when the ball arrives, Rod Moore arrives at Ibuka, and he causes the incompletion. And here we go again, right? They move the football down the field, Gus, and then yet, Michigan has a chance to get off the field if they can get a stop here on third down. Third down and 11. At the 29. Michigan's calling a timeout here. With 5.46 to play, Michigan uses their second, second the timeout. 30-second timeout. Ohio State with all three timeouts remaining. Tomorrow on Fox, we've got a huge doubleheader. First, Tom Brady, the Bucks take on the Browns. Then in America's Game of the Week, the Rams battle Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. It all kicks off at 1 Eastern. Check for the game in your area. We saw Patrick Mahomes tight last game. <laughs> yes, we did. Gosh, Caleb Williams for USC. He was special last week in that win over UCLA. And some guys that played at these two programs, Ohio State and Michigan, that have excelled in the National Football League and in this game specifically last year guys like Aiden Hutchinson you know it's these two programs just so rich in NFL talent Xavier Johnson checks in the backfield for Ohio State on third down and 11 CJ Stroud with time sideline throw incomplete that one high for Emeka Abuka, so on third down and 11. Ohio State coming up empty. And they'll bring on Noah Ruggles to attempt a long field goal. Well, they didn't get the pressure on him, but the coverage was excellent down the field. And again, that's Jalen Harrell. That is, this is an edge defender. He's got coverage on the tight end on a fourth down, and then there on the outside against Abuka, and he forces him into a field goal. So Noah Ruggles into a tip run, one from 47 yards away. Got it up. And he nails it. Noah Ruggles. Big time kick of 47 yards. The pistol back. McCarthy to throw it. McCarthy looked and throws deep. Got a wide open receiver. Cornelius Johnson sprinting. Touchdown, Michigan. 75 yards. They said the kid couldn't throw the deep ball last week had a two touchdown game against Indiana in the first half check out this route here's here's Johnson right on your screen he's gonna get a little outside move before he goes to the post at the top of his route he's working right here see that outside move that is great stuff Cam Martinez number 13 bites on the outside move and Cornelius Johnson is wide open back in the in the backfield the pressure came up on the edges and McCarthy did a great job of stepping up in the pocket and then finds Johnson and now back-to-back -back plays 69 yards 75 yards and Michigan in business no bigger plays than the last two for Cornelius Johnson in this matchup on this stage here's Xavier Johnson it's the sideline goes out of bounds at the 10 Pushing and shoving going on. As usual for Michigan, Ohio State. Just ask our Charles Woodson. He and David Boston got into it. Yard line. Stroud to Ibuka. And a first down, Ohio State. A gain 
about 15 yards. D.J. Turner throws him out of play. And again, it's the same blueprint for Ohio State. Attack the perimeter on first down. Get yourself going in this series to try to get some rhythm. Now, what's taken them out of rhythm has been some false starts. This offensive line now under an immense amount of pressure, I'm sure, from their coaching staff to get in there and play clean. First down and 10 at the 36. Train him on the edge. And he'll rumble forward and get to the 43. Michael Barrett with the tackle, gain of seven. I mean, Gus, we do so many Michigan and Ohio State games. It's just like they come out of the woodwork, right? It's like, okay, so now it's Chip Trainum's turn. You know, like well, he's got one carry all season before today, and now all of a sudden he's like the featured back in the game to 11 0 squads. I just, I love every moment of this. You're 100% right. Second and three at the 43. Fake the reverse. Strauss setting up, looking, delivers, and it's caught. Fleming, and Fleming holds on to the football. He's had a case of the drops at times this year. Gains 15. Will Johnson knocks him out of bounds. Watch him at the top of the route work, work all the way back to his quarterback. Ball's not there. Ball's not there. So what does he do? He comes all the way back, runs through the football, back towards his quarterback. That is an excellent job of playing detailed wide receiver on the outside. Ohio State quickly into Michigan territory. Stroud winds up, throws a deep ball side. Line! Caught! Touchdown! Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvelous! 42 yards! Ruggles, extra point, and good. Ohio Michigan, and Stroud makes them pay. Watches Michigan's going to try to blitz, but they do it from the safety position way deep. Gus, that's called from depth. You're never going to get all the way to the quarterback, and Stroud knows as soon as that safety blitzes, he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside and delivers an absolute dime to Marvin Harrison. Watch at the top of the route. A little nudge to create separation. There it was on Jamon Green, and he's able to create that separation, and then the beautiful throw from C.J. Stroud right in the perfect spot, and Harrison extends into the end zone. Last four possessions for these two teams. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown, first half. Roman Wilson ready to receive. Crowd back in the game now for Ohio State as Donovan Edwards picks his way forward and picks up four yards. Steel Chambers with the stick. Boy, this Ohio State defense, I got to tell you, you, you can just tell the energy and the focus in that defensive front seven. They are dead set on not allowing Michigan to run the ball, in particular with how that game played out a year ago. They have been flying up to the line of scrimmage. Cornelius Johnson with 156 of Michigan's 193 yards. And the run. Edwards trying to get outside. And he'll get close to the first down. Zach Harrison calls him down. So that'll bring up third down and one. Well, now we're going to see that linebacker. Gus, I told you a linebacker was warming up with their running backs before the game. Number 20, Khalil Mullings checks into the game. He's 6'2", 230 pounds. Last time he played running back was in high school. Practiced some this week. They think he's a very smart player, can understand the system even on one week of practice. And here in short yardage, here he is. Mullings come into the, comes into the game now at running back. Khalil Mullings. Third down and one at the 34. They give it to him straight ahead. I don't think he'll get it. That Ohio State defense tightening up. Tommy Eichenberg playing with two broken thumbs. The leading tackler for the Buckeyes plugs up that hole. These linebackers flying in. Watch Steel Chambers and Eichenberg coming from that second level. And they're unblocked. They're able to scrape in there. And they're the ones that contact and tackle Mullings, who could not get his momentum going. That is a huge stop for the Buckeye defense. And Ohio State uses their first timeout here in the first half. Steel Chambers in on the play as well. And there's no player tougher on this Ohio State team than Tommy Eichenberg. Here's a man playing with all kinds of pain and injuries. Two thumbs that are 
basically broken. Tommy Two Thumbs out there. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Tommy Two Thumbs. You can see they're all wrapped up. But man, this dude, I'm telling you what, I thought he was absolutely snubbed by the Buckus Award. He has over 100 tackles, has been one of the best linebackers for Ohio State, which had a great turnaround, obviously, defensively under Jim Knowles this year. And you can see why he's so important on that last short yardage play. So Michigan will not go for it on fourth down. Emeka Abuka back at his own 20. Brad Robinson, Robbins punting from the 20. And here's Abuka with the fair catch. And he has it. 46-yard punt. They can come up with points at the end of this first half. Stroud out wide again, and Abuka takes his eyes off the football and drops it. Incomplete pass, second and ten. Boy, it was just kind of a, a, a slow game for a while right before those touchdown plays that we saw. And here, Abuka, you know, they they're this is a huge part of their game plan today. Get on the perimeter with their athletes. Make it a track meet. And there, Abuka just takes his eyes off the ball. Ohio State with incredible speed on their offense. Second and ten of the 20. Train him looking. And he'll get through the hole. Chip train him. Tackled by Junior Colson after a six-yard gain. Well, this is the point in time where Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator, has to make a decision, right? I mean, Marvin Harrison just proved that he can beat you in a hurry if you take away one of those safeties. Mike Morris not on the field right now. Remember, he was banged up, didn't play last week against Illinois, and now Minter. What I see right now is that there is a safety over top of Marvin Harrison almost every single snap. But here, they'll play single safety, Gus. He's got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against true freshman Will, jo Will Johnson. Third down and four at the 26. And this one deflected and complete. So Ohio State will have to punt. Mirko. Henning waiting. He'll have it. Henning straight ahead and finally brought down as he crosses the 30-yard line. A 46-yard punt and a five-yard return. Xavier Johnson with the tackle on special team. So third down to two at the 41. Here's McCarthy. Another flag. Before the ball was snapped. Ball start. 17 seconds remaining in the first half. Here's McCarthy. And another flag. J.J. McCarthy to the sideline. And bobbled and caught out of bounds goes Cornelius Johnson. And this one sent away. Abuka comes up to field it and has it at the 25. C.J. Stroud, 17 of 26, 191, two touchdowns. And that's the end of the first half. This one has allowed those big plays to happen for Michigan's offense. In the backfield, McCarthy to throw on first down, guns it to the sideline. Ronnie Bell, and he makes the catch. And this is one of the emphasis, points of emphasis for Michigan, is try to attack these corners. They feel like the Ohio State corners might be the weakest part of their defense. And so they're coming out, and it was early in this game, and now it has been often, trying to attack that exterior, knowing that they don't have Blake Corum. And now it's going to be incumbent upon Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, to adjust. But so far, he hasn't. Lots of linebackers in the game. Look at the low safeties. Everybody committed to stopping the run. Second and five. Here's a handoff. Edwards, and he'll go nowhere. Nicely defended by Ohio State. Tommy Eichenberg, or Tommy Two Thumbs, as you called him, Joe Clapp. <laughs> hey, he's coming in there. Rocking. Watch the ball handling, though. Look at Edwards almost dropped it. Remember, he's suffering from that hand injury as well and is playing with the cast. And the ball security there on second down was not what he wanted. And there's Tommy Two Thumbs coming in the backfield with a great tackle. Third down and five at the 30. And they'll run it. 
for the first down. Edwards slicing through. It looks like he has it. Let's see. Tyleek Williams with the tackle. Didn't get it. They'll go for it here. It's fourth down. Big crowd at the line of scrimmage, and now a first down. A two-yard gain for Michigan. Well, that's a huge call by Jim Harbaugh. Gives it to Donovan Edwards. One thing I'd be worried about giving it to Donovan Edwards in those short yardage situations, he clearly doesn't want to keep two hands on the ball. He wants to secure that ball just with the one hand that is not injured, but they go for it on fourth down with Edwards, and they're able to get just enough push to move the chains. First down and 10 at the 36. C.J. Stokes comes into the game now. At a running back for Michigan. McCarthy steps up in the pocket with running room. Throws on the move. And incomplete. That one thrown low for Roman Wilson. Wilson had a step. He's the fastest Wolverine on the field. As McCarthy broke the pocket, he had his eyes downfield, and he had him. He just shorted the throw a little bit. That would have been a big play for Michigan, obviously, on this first series of the second half. Second and ten. C.J. Stokes remains in the game. Here's McCarthy with the quarterback run. McCarthy still moving. Look at J.J. McCarthy gets out of bounds at the Ohio State 45. That's 19 yards the hard way. Well, the run game has just not been there for Michigan, so now they're going to have to try the quarterback run. He certainly got the ability, and now the toughness. Look at him. He was, there was no way he's sliding feet first there. Puts his head down initiates what is that eight more yards after the contact initial contact before he goes out of bounds jj mccarthy partner correct me if i'm wrong he's a 4-4 guy as ronnie bell gets tied up first down and 10 of the 45. play action jj mccarthy lobs it wide to try to stop the run. Safety is going to be man-to-man -man on Loveland. He's going to come up, and then he's going to wheel onto the outside. Watch as he breaks this route, and they get caught up, he and Johnson, but then he's able to get some space as Ransom overplays it, and then he's wide open. Beautiful throw, and then he dives for that front pylon, and it's a touchdown for Michigan on another big play. Thus, that man defense is not working for the Buckeyes. Extra point is good. Michigan's three touchdowns, 75 yards, 69 yards, now 45 yards, Colston Loveland. The Wolverines have the lead once again. Back that takes them there. Well, first down, Buckeyes will run it with Chip Trainum. The game three, Chris Jenkins with the tackle. Trainum has now become clearly Ohio State's best option at running back, or at least the one that the coaches feel most comfortable with. Trainum now almost 10 carries, 9 carries, 67 yards. He's been effective. Remember, Travion Henderson not available, not going today. Second and seven. Shroud underneath, caught for first down. Marvin Harrison Jr. in front of Mike Sanders still. Seems like this Michigan defense, Joel, is just trying to keep Ohio State in front of them. Yeah, and they gave up the one big play on the touchdown to, to Harrison Jr. And in a play in which they tried to blitz from way deep as, as a safety rod more. But other than that, they've tried to play a little bit safer with safeties back, not give up those big pass plays, and allow their front seven to try to stop the run. First down to the 42. Here's the run again. Train him. And train him. Just carrying Michigan Wolverine defenders with him. Michael Barrett had to hop on to make the tackle. That's an eight-yard game. Boy, that is a physical run. You can tell train him. I mean, he is he is a big fella. He's got some speed, and he's got a lot of experience running the ball. He weighs 230 pounds. 
Second down and two at midfield. Whoa, train him. Just ambushed in the backfield. Michigan. That's McGregor. Carroll. A loss of one. Now a short yardage third down situation. Ohio State was able to punch it for a first a few different times in that first half. We'll see if they can here. Third and three. Ohio State, four of nine on third down conversions. They pitch it to trade him, trying to get outside, and he will not. No gain on the play. Mike Sandra still, Junior Colson tracking him down. And Ohio State will punt it away. Well, watch Colson. He does a great job of staying outside. 25. Look at him. He works outside, and then he's forcing Trainum to go wide. Same was still is there, and that's just great effort from those two players. Support players out of your defense. Thus, I can't stress enough, one of the most important parts of playing defense is setting the edge. Having guys that will keep their outside arm free and not allow a ball carrier to get outside, and Colson did an outstanding job. Jersey Mirko sends it off. A.J. Henning ready to return. And he has the fair catch inside the 15. First and 10 of the 13, McCarthy. And that one batted down at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Once again, Zach Harrison getting a hand on the football, his second deflection of this game. I mean, how often, Gus, we've called how many Michigan games this year? How often do we see Michigan this many series in a row just throwing it on, on first down? You know, normally they come out and just try to establish that run, try to suffocate the, oppo uh, the opposing defense. But here, this is the J.J. McCarthy show today. Second and ten. The winner of this game advancing to the Big Ten Championship. Next week in Indianapolis. McCarthy. And incomplete. Well defended, Denzel Burke knocks it out of Ronnie Bell's hands, and that'll bring up a third down and long. And in, in particular on this point in the field, this is where if you're Ohio State and Jim Knowles, you've got to play a safe coverage. You don't want to go man-to-man. -man. They've been burned too many times here. Good man coverage by Denzel Burke on Ronnie Bell, but Bell almost got back to this ball. Watch as he's trying to come back shoulder. Got to keep your safeties deep here. Those big plays have killed Ohio State. We'll see if they adjust. Third down and 10 of the 13. McCarthy looking, checks it down. Donovan Edwards, and he won't go anywhere. Tommy, two thumbs, baby. Tommy Eichenberg. This guy is one of the best linebackers in America. Having a great season in there. Terrific pass coverage out on the outside. Watch, he's coming to the right side of your screen. He's all over Donovan Edwards. Man coverage again from Ohio State, and they tried to dump it off to their back. Edwards, who's explosive out of the backfield, but Edwards had nowhere to go because of Tommy Eichenberg. Brad Robbins will put it away from the one. No pressure. Ibuka comes up to field it. And he has it inside the 50. Great field position to start for Ohio. Best starting field position for Ohio State today. C.J. Stroud backing up over the middle. And it's caught out of the backfield. Train him. Train him still running. Hits the sideline. And goes out of bounds at the 25. Chip Train him. The Arizona State transfer. There's flags in the backfield. I think they're going to get Donovan Jackson on a hold, Chris Jenkins put a great pass rush from his tackle position, and he looked like he had a free rush there at C.J. Stroud. There's also flags deep in the defensive backfield near side at the 10-yard line. Two fouls on the play. Both will be enforced. Holding offense number 74. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. After the play was over. 
unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense, number 88. No 88. Got to think that that's 18 that they're calling that on. Marvin Harrison. Possibly it's G. Scott. Watch G. Scott here. This is the hold. Donovan Jackson, that's the hold on Jenkins. And then at the end of the play, I thought Harrison, okay, here's G. Scott. 88. Oh, yeah, a headbutt out of bounds. And that's clearly, and Ryan Day knows it. He sees the penalty come out, and he says, get him out of here. The mistakes have really hurt the Buckeyes. We've seen some false starts, some mental miscues for this offense that have slowed down series. And now, Gus, first and forever, 35. At the 27 for the Bucks. Here's the pitch. Train them. And train will gain a couple of yards. Mozzie Smith hauls him down. And remember, this series started on the plus side of the 50. The defense did a great job. They played the field position game. They got the ball on the plus side of the 50. And now they're way behind the chains. Stroud directing traffic. Dumps it off underneath. Caught by Marvin Harrison Jr. It's a gain of 13. Colson Barrett combining on the tackle. Brings up a third down. 19 yards. Here's Stroud looking. Stroud. And this ball caught by Trainum at the 44 at the 44 yard line. Same was still with the tackle. Gain of 13. Fourth down and Ohio State looks like they're gonna punt it away. And Stroud doesn't like it. He was trying to tell him stay on the sideline. He felt like they got there in position where they they could go for it here on fourth down but ryan day as he did on the previous series is going to try to play the field position game watch stroud here he comes up to the ball and he's thinking okay we did enough stay over there stay over there i want to be we can do this and nope ryan day runs out jesse mirko from the 44 and a flag snap offense number 94 five yard penalty remains fourth down because this ohio state team is playing really tight right now lots of miscues this entire building right now there is a a fear factor ruminating from these fans right now that you can feel the tension in this building as michigan has played well here in the third quarter 24 20 wolverines Mirko gets it away, takes a bounce, and trickles into the end zone for touchback. J.J. McCarthy to throw it. Rolls out of the pocket. McCarthy looking. Throws on the move underneath, and it's caught by Donovan Edwards. He pick up seven yards on the play. Let's show you some highlights from J.J. today. Well, he talks about that passing game. In large part, it's due because Ohio State is just daring them to throw the ball. That man coverage, not a lot of safety help here. McCarthy, beautiful ball right down the middle of the field. Cornelius Johnson, his second touchdown of the game. Here, a beautiful job of stepping up in the pop pocket. Loveland was wide open right down the right side. Now. Second down. Here's McCarthy again looking for the first down, and he has it as he gets pushed out of bounds by Steel Chambers. He gains five. So in the run game, they have to use the quarterback to equate the numbers because of how many resources Ohio State is committing. And they're going to have to throw the ball, in particular on first down, get themselves into advantageous spots. J.J. McCarthy now three passing touchdowns of 45-plus yards. Guy's playing his heart out. You know, we said early in this game, Gus, that it was going to be on J.J. McCarthy because Quorum's not out there and they can't run the ball. Number nine was going to have to play his best, and he certainly has so far. First down at the 32. McCarthy winding up now runs it again with that speed he'll slide down short of the line to gain in front of steel chambers it's a gain of nine you know, what I like about his game right now is that he's making really good decisions you know the ball is not going in a precarious spot he's not throwing it wildly when he decides to run it's the correct spot 
He's getting himself down there. Now second and short. Michigan can really get creative if they want to on a play call like this. Second down in a yard. Edwards, first down and more. Donovan Edwards plowing forward. He gains 12. Nathan Ransom with the tackle. Well, that's more of what we would expect out of Michigan's offensive line. Big hole off that left side. Look at this, guys. These guys coming down at you, and there's they didn't have anybody to block in there. There was an extra lineman in. That was Trenty Jones, number 53, lined up as the tight end. Ola with Timmy in there as well, the center. Thus, I think he's one of the best offensive linemen in the country. He's certainly been fantastic for them as a transfer from Virginia, set the tone and made them maybe even a better offensive line than what they were a year ago. First down at the Ohio State 47. Edwards breaks a tackle, slashes forward, keeps his feet and goes down about a yard short of the first a nine yard gain ty hamilton got a hold of it well now what you're seeing is the first time today that michigan has been able to establish a rhythm on the ground without blake Corum. now this half in the second half michigan establishing themselves with 60 yards rushing so far remember ohio state was going to have to back off to stop those big plays and now we see run 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 four in a row nice rhythm from this wolverine offense Second and one at the 38. McCarthy, play fake. With time, delivers down the field, incomplete. Andrew Anthony, the target. Looks like there was some confusion on the route for Anthony. Turned the wrong way. And that'll bring up third down and short. Denzel Burke covering. And Ohio State got a little pressure on that outside. He was trying to give an inside move, then get outside. But Burke had help inside, so he was able to maintain his outside leverage. And that's why Anthony could not get loose out there. Third down and one. Mullings comes into the game at a running back. Number 20, the deep man in the eye formation. And they'll give it to him. And he'll throw it! Caught inside the 25. Luke Schoonmaker. A gain of 15. Are you kidding me with that play call? How about the courage from Michigan and Jim Harbaugh? They move a linebacker to running back this week and then let him throw a pass? Holy cow, Schoonmaker. Wide open. And then he jumps up. It's like a Tim Tebow jump pass for a first down. Watch Mullings. Jumps up, delivers it. Wow, first down Wolverines. From the 23, Donovan Edwards back in the game. Here's Edwards with a hole. And Donovan Edwards, he gains six yards. Hickman with the tackle. Michigan starting to grind it now. Well, this is starting to remind me a little of, of late in the game last year where Michigan's offensive line just started winning the line of scrimmage. And now what you're seeing is that on all these first down runs, they're gaining Gus five, six, and seven yards. And that's exactly what Ryan Day knew that he had to avoid. Because now in the second half, this game has turned from a track meet, which it was in the first, to the grind it out, slow style of game that Michigan wants to play here on this series. Ninth play of the drive that started at the Michigan 20. And the handoff straight ahead to Edwards. He runs into a pile led by Eichenberg. Massive third down. Ohio State has to force them into a field goal opportunity here. Michigan's offensive line has been winning on this series. Third down and three at the 16. As the Wolverines break to the line of scrimmage. McCarthy in the shotgun. Remember, he's got great wheels. McCarthy hands it off. First down, Donovan Edwards. Running over that left side. These offensive linemen for Michigan now starting to get great push. 
where you got great down blocks and then watch Loveland, the freshman tight end. That seal right there on the edge, that's what Edwards is able to just creep inside of and find himself across the line to gain for a first down. And they don't give it to him. They do not. They'll do that. The chains are all screwed up on the opposite side. Now they do give him the first down. First down for Michigan. At the 12. Play clock winding down. Jim Harbaugh is livid. And the reason is, is because the down box on the far side, Gus, never changed. So if you're Michigan, you don't know, like, is it a first down or is it not? That affects the play call, obviously. So Harbaugh is yelling and saying, hey, listen, I don't know what down it is. And then once you change it, you didn't reset the play clock to 25. This is what he's upset with right now. Normally when there is something going on that's a foot, let's say, on the field, the official will pump his hand to the sky. Like, you know, the old school, like, raising the roof. Raising the roof. But that means a okay, reset the play clock to 25. Boy, in a game like this, those timeouts are valuable. Very valuable. So they have to burn one there on what is essentially a first down play. this Michigan offensive line and their play caller Sharon Moore a lot of credit in the second half don't you they stuck with it they've gotten physical back to their roots and thus it's paid off on this series we talked about halftime adjustment there's Sharon Moore first year co-offensive coordinator they gave Michigan back the timeout and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter 24 to 20 Michigan leading Ohio State on the road coming up the fourth quarter it could be epic folks first down and 10 of the 13 Edwards and Edwards will go nowhere he'll lose yardage on this play Eichenberg in there as well as Teron Vincent I think what you're going to start seeing is Ohio State go back to the defense that they were running early in the game, Gus, where they were committing all their resources to stopping the run and leaving one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. That led to big plays for the Wolverines, which means at some point here in this downset inside the 15, McCarthy's going to have to make a tight window throw. Look for Ronnie Bell at some point in this downset. Second down and 11 after the one-yard loss at the 14-yard line. Ronnie Bell in motion. He'll line up at the top of your screen, and a timeout called by the Wolverines. First of the half, 30 second timeout. It should be noted after that confusion to end the third quarter, Gus, they did officially award Michigan that timeout back. So this one that Michigan takes is the first of the second half that they've taken. Let's go downstairs. See what Tom Rinaldi has. Well, we talked about the tension on one side of the field for Ohio State. On the Michigan side, Mike Sandra still one of the leaders of this defense, up on the bench, exhorting his teammates around him as they head into this fourth quarter. One of the things he did, he pointed across the field and said, that's who we thought they were. That's who we thought they were. The next message he delivered, if you all want to win the natty, it starts right here. Great energy on the Michigan bench. A lot of tension. Almost feels like Ohio State guys is trying to be two opponents to execute to defeat the tension and then defeat the Wolverines as well. Thank you. Sandra still a converted wide receiver. Excelling on defense this year. Second and 11 at the 14. Play fake. McCarthy in trouble. McCarthy on the move. McCarthy throws it and incomplete. Great pressure by the Buckeyes. 
The Ohio State, one thing you know about this team, they're going to fight until the very end. Well, there's no doubt about it. That's a great pressure by Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator. He sends the safety, Lathan Ransom, as well as Zach Harrison, the end. And really a great athletic play from J.J. McCarthy to not take the sack and actually get that ball away to create this third down. Third down and 11 at the 14-yard line for Michigan. 13th play of the drive. Edwards right next to McCarthy. Here's McCarthy dancing, fires in the corner, and incomplete. And a flag. Ronnie Bell at target. This is going to be pass interference against Ronnie Hickman. He definitely arrived early, had never turned his head around, and interfered with the ability to catch it. Pass interference. Defense number 14. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. As Bell goes up to try to get this ball, you see the, all the contact there early. Hickman was beat. That's why he never gets his head around. Bell was wide open, but because McCarthy had to get loose in the pocket, rolled to his left just a little bit, and McCarthy's loving it, and Michigan will have a first and goal from the two. So the short yardage becomes harder, and Edwards will actually exit here. Isaiah Gash now in the game number 41. Gash, a junior from Green Bay, Wisconsin. He was the hero last week on that fourth down completion against Illinois. Second and goal. They lose a yard from the three. McCarthy rolling. McCarthy looking. Fires incomplete. Colson Loveland, the intended receiver. Ransom in the vicinity. Brings up third down and goal. They'll bring the speed players back on the field. Three wide receivers in, entering the game. Edwards also entering the game. If they spread it out here, Gus, watch for the quarterback draw. Michigan had a play earlier in the game. They sent four receivers one way, one the other. That's when that draw opens wide up. Third down and goal at the three-yard line. Can Michigan pay it off? J.J. McCarthy, he'll run it with a lead. Touchdown, Wolverines. J.J. McCarthy. What a day. Three touchdown passes. Now he runs one in. And the Wolverines take a 30 to 20 lead. He actually ran right past his offensive lineman. When you're a ball carrier near the end zone, sometimes you just got to be your own blocker. Watch as he passes Keegan 77. He's just like, get me in there. Lowers his shoulder. That one was against Hickman, it looks. And it's good. 15-play drive for Michigan, covering 80 yards. J.J. McCarthy punches it in. The Wolverines eat up seven minutes and 51 seconds. Okay. On first down, C.J. Stroud looks backside with time, dumps it off, and whoo, voracious tackle. Michael Barrett brings down Mayan Williams. This Michigan defense has been able to play soft coverage with safeties back. They've been able to control, not stop, but control the run game and then fly up and make tackles on the perimeter. And right there, you see the reaction after the physical finish from Barrett. Second and nine.
Stroud. C.J. Stroud bounces out of the pocket. Throws on the move, and it is Fleming with the catch on the sideline. Great catch for Julian Fleming. He gains seven. Works back to the ball again. Got that foot inbound, secured it. It's an excellent catch on the outside. Good protection. I think they will take a look at this just to see exactly when he secured the ball and where that foot was in relation to the sideline. Again, it's all about when he actually controls the ball, then you move to a foot. Control sure looks like a foot to me, so as long as that toe wasn't touching the sideline, looks like that one would. Here's C.J. Stroud, and it's knocked away incomplete. McGregor once again, and McGregor has knocked down two, maybe three passes in this game. That brings up a fourth down. What will Ohio State do? They're going to run the punter out here, and, and this is it's an interesting decision. We just saw Michigan go on an eight-minute drive. 11-point deficit. I don't know how many possessions Ohio State and Ryan they can expect out of this punt. I, I, don't, I know that it sounds crazy, but Gus, I, I think that the... The modern style of football would tell you that they should probably go for it here. Jesse Mirko. He's run the ball from his punting position this season. Kicks it away. And fair caught at the 27. Field position for, for Michigan after that series in which they were able to really establish themselves on the ground and there's a flag down. After the play was over, Unsportsmanlike conduct. Kicking team number eight. The 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. Gus Johnson along with Joel Platt. What a game. <laughs> it's been a heck of a game. And this sequence right here, this is. For Michigan, this is what you would want, right? Establish that run game and then how have a possession in the fourth quarter to really go and choke the life out of this game. And the punt there from Ryan Day, interesting, because this is clearly a nod to his defensive coordinator that he just hired this offseason. He's trusting Jim Knowles and that defense right now to try to get this ball back. But you can see what that penalty did, Gus, in terms of field position now well across the 40-yard line. First down and 10 at the 43. For the Wolverines, up 31 to 20. And McCarthy looking, McCarthy goes deep. Incomplete, but a flag. Cornelius Johnson, once again the target. Ransom was in coverage, arrived too early. Defense number 12, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. How about Michigan airing it out, just letting their quarterback try to go out and win this game. Johnson goes up, clearly contacted, easy call for the official. And a ball that J.J. McCarthy threw just a bit underthrown, and that led to that contact from Ransom on Cornelius Johnson. So Michigan now with the football at the Ohio State 42. First down and 10. Donovan Edwards straight ahead. Three yard gain. Well now it becomes an offensive line deal. Okay, so the second half now, 
this offensive line has established themselves. This is the pace and the terms of the game that Michigan wanted from Jump Street. Now, they didn't get it, and they were able to stay with Ohio State in that track meet, which was vital, because now, once they've established this run, they're out there trying to choke the life out of this game here late with 11 minutes to go with those five guys up front. Second and seven. McCarthy gives it to Edwards. He slides and loses his footing. Zach Harrison there to bring him down. A loss of one. Uh, here's another third down. It feels like we've been in these situations all day long. Both sides, Ohio State and Michigan. We'll see if Jim Knowles tries to pressure J.J. McCarthy. One thing that we do know is that they love to target Ronnie Bell in these situations, number eight. And McCarthy is dangerous with his feet. McCarthy runs it himself. McCarthy. And he'll just get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Nicely done. J.K. Johnson, the sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri, makes the tackle. That was a bit of a cautious call there from Michigan. They just go with a straight zone read. If they just attach a little bit of a, a go route to Ronnie Bell, he's going to have a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and now the corner would have to make up his mind. Are you coming up to defend the run, or could you go back and defend the pass? And how about this field goal attempt? Gus from Moody from way downtown. This will be a 57-yard field goal attempt for Jake Moody. He's the Groza Award winner. 54 is the career long. No good. Wide left. 9.21 to go. Here's a handoff to Hayden, the freshman. He gains three. You, you can see that run game in the second half just hasn't been there like it was in the first half. And Michigan is doing it with their safeties way back. So that's the reason why it's hard to just throw it out to the outside on those quick routes like they were able to do to establish rhythm as these corners are way down. See, Gus, the corners can play down in coverage like that because of the safeties up over the, over the top. Second down and seven. C.J. Stroud over the middle. Oh, incomplete. Harrison, the intended receiver. Moore. Once again, defensively for Michigan. They felt like Moore arrived early. Here's Harrison on this in-breaking route. They really love this, and Moore's trying to play the ball. Gets in there. They don't get the call. Stroud wanted it right there, but again, with those safeties back in that zone coverage, Gus, all the eyes are on the quarterback. He definitely has equal rights to that ball. As long as he's making a play there, they're going to let that contact go. Probably a great no call from the official. Third down and seven. I bet you this is four down territory for Ohio State. Here's Stroud. Underneath cut. Abuka. And Abuka down at the Michigan 15. Mike Sandra still with the tackle. That's a 43-yard gain for Ohio State. Well, the safety split way wide. And where does that leave? It leaves the seam route wide open. Abuka is able to get over the top of the second-level defender, and it's a completion. Here's Stroud again. Looking. Stroud backs up. Stroud just fires it out of bounds. Second and 10. 8.21 to go. Jesse Minter, this defensive coordinator, first year at Michigan, replacing Mike McDonald. He's put together a really good defensive plan, in particular in this second half. Second and 10 at the 15. Plus, they got to get to Marvin Harrison Jr. He's their best player on the outside. He's the one that's got to make a play. He's at the bottom of your screen. Here's Stroud with a handoff. And it's Trainum bulldozing. Trainum down at the 10. Barrett with the stop. Six-yard gain. Well, I talked about those four-point plays. And Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator, talking about how do I have my four-point play calls? That means I've got a chance for them to force a field goal here. 
and he's got to pull something out of the bag that Day has not seen, that Stroud has not seen. Some sort of blitz, pressure, or coverage that is unique to this game. Third down and four at the nine. Stroud under center this time. Stroud looking. Stroud in the end zone. The converted wide receiver breaks that up. And that brings up fourth and four. They were trying to sneak the tight end from the right side all the way back to the left. And he had a lot of space, but Mike Samer still with the makeup speed and then at the catch point. Look at him play the ball perfectly. Goes after it with his hand and just knocks it away from Cade Stover in the end zone. So Noah Ruggles. Good today from 32 yards and 47 yards. This one from 27, and it's good. So Ohio State takes the three points. 31 to 23. 7-23 remaining in the fourth. Folks, this is the game. Number two versus number three. And it looks like it's going down the wire. 31 to 23, Ohio State sends it away. And Roman Wilson lets it go over his head. Here's Edwards with a lay, Donovan Edwards. Down the sideline, gets past Ransom. Donovan Edwards, touchdown, Michigan, the Don. State in man coverage all day long. Watch this. Ronnie Bell or Cornelius Johnson there can just run off his defender, which means there's no one left. And all they got to do is seal the linebacker. Ola with Timmy, the best center in college football, gets it done on Tommy Eichenberg. He gets to the second level, and then it's just Edwards, and he's in a foot race. Extra point good. That's the fourth touchdown of 45 yards or more today by Michigan. So Moody kicks it off. How does Ohio State respond with 7-11 to go? Down 38-23. Maturity and physicality that he has has come out here and played fantastic. Here's C.J. Stroud, and he completes it on the far sideline. Xavier Johnson gains five yards as D.J. Turner wrestles him down. Second and five. Stroud underneath, and it's caught. Ibuka. Ibuka Ibuka. Picks up 11. Rod Moore drops him. Well, this offense is having to, right now, operate as fast as they possibly can. That's the obvious. Defensively for Michigan, you cannot get beat deep. Here's C.J. Stroud again. Swings it out, and it's Xavier Johnson. Junior Colson keeps him in bounds. Six-yard gain. Clock's continuing to run. 6:14 and counting. If I'm the defensive coordinator, Jesse Minter, I'm shouting at the safeties the entire time. Deeper than the deepest. Make sure that nobody runs past you. Keep everything in front. Second and four. Johnson, jitterbugging. Johnson picks up the first down. Page with the tackle. Just forcing the snap it time and time again, and it's been inbounds and just the clock rolling away now inside of 545. Stroud delivers. Ibuka with the catch. And Sainra still with the tackle. It's a gain of six. He will try for Jesse Minter to get some fresh pass rushers out there. Now McGregor on the field. Second down and four the 40-yard line. Ohio State moving quickly. C.J. Stroud delivers. And this time it's Fleming. Stays in bounds. Picks up extra yards. 12-yard gain. 
Well, they're moving the football. They're doing a good job in large part, dude, because Michigan just trying to keep everybody in front. But at some point, they've, they've got to take a shot here towards the end zone. From the 28, C.J. Stroud looking. And Stroud again to the sideline. Another first down. This time it's Marvin Harrison Jr. A 12-yard gain. With 4.50 remaining on the clock here in the fourth quarter. And these, these defensive backs just playing well off of these wide receivers as McCarthy looks on. Rallying up to try to make the tackle more importantly inbounds. Stroud. Guns it. And incomplete. No flag on the play. Ibuka, the target. Sane was still defensively. Mike Sane was still, folks, a converted wide receiver this season. He's had an all Big Ten first team type year. Coming across, gets that left hand out in front of Ibuka. Is able to just get enough of that pass. And Sane was still again. And by the way, he's taken the position of a first round defender from a, from a year ago, Daxton Hill who was an excellent player, and now just a converted wide receiver is going to come over and play that position. They haven't missed a beat. He's been sensational all year. Second and 10 at the 16. C.J. Stroud to throw it. Stroud now rolls out of the pocket. Directed traffic on the move. Incomplete. Ibuka looks like he slipped in the end zone in front of D.J. Turner. Brings up third and 10. Buka had a moment where if he just settled down, he would have been wide open, but he kept moving outside toward the sideline there in the end zone. And because of that, Stroud couldn't find him as he was trying to keep him more to the inside. Third down and 10 at the 16-yard line, 427 remaining. C.J. Stroud goes through his progression. Stroud just throws it forward, and it's intercepted. Taylor Upshaw just plucks it out of the air, and the Wolverines have the football. That's the first turnover of the game. This is a defense that has not gotten a lot of takeaways this year, but none bigger than that one as Taylor Upshaw is going to take a picture with his teammates with the turnover buffs on the sideline. Stroud, as he steps up in the pocket, he knows that a sack is just, it's a killer in this situation. He's trying to make a play and watch as he tries to flip it to Xavier Johnson, but it's just behind him a little bit. Xavier Johnson bats it up in the air, and that's what allows Upshaw to take that ball away. And Michigan has come in here and just quieted this crowd. 4.18 to go. They'll run it again with Edwards. A six-yard gain. Michigan closing in on four minutes. 38-23. The winner of this game advances to the Big Ten Championship. I mean, what a great game this has been. And, and Michigan in this second half, Ryan Day has got to be feeling like he's, he's witnessing the same game all over again because this feels so similar to a year ago in Ann Arbor, Gus, when the run game just started to churn it out and the defense was able to just make enough plays, in particular in the red zone, and that's happened here again in the second half. They'll run it again with Edwards and... It appears that the team with the most rushing yards is going to win this game for the 21st consecutive time. Michigan really plowing through the Ohio State defense in the second half. And look at what they've done in the last two years. This offensive line, last season, 188 yards in the second half, over nine a pop. Today, 152 yards in the second half, over eight a pop. And this is what's going on, and it started with a fourth-quarter speech from Mike Sainristil, the converted wide receiver. 
eight-minute drive. Punched it in. That was ten rushes on that one. St. Brasil himself with an incredible play to knock that one away from Cade Stover. And then this was the lightning strike, Gus. Donovan Edwards, the long touchdown run that really Michigan hadn't gotten a long run all day long until that carry from Edwards, and here we are. Wolverines doing it without their star, Blake Corn. Here's the run again. Donovan Edwards! Whoa! Can they catch him? No! Donovan Edwards again! 85 yards! The Don! Two huge touchdowns! And the Wolverines go up 44 23. What a second half. Wow. I tell you what. Complete domination for the Wolverines over their arch rivals, the Ohio State Buckeyes, here in the second half. Extra point good. 45-23. Another look at Donovan Edwards. Thus, when you've got nobody deep, you have got to be gap sound. And when you're not gap sound, this is what happens. Oluwa Timmy hooks the tackle. And at that point, boom, it's gone. That's what a great offensive line can do. Edwards, 205 yards rushing this half. Remember, at one particular... That big boa constrictor came out from Michigan, and they just squeezed the life out of that Ohio State defense. But it all goes back to philosophy. The philosophy of this man. Intellectual brutality. Power football. Tight ends. Running game. Going away from the current state of college football in which teams want to pass it 54 times a game. Jim Harbaugh has stuck to his roots. And here's a man that they wanted to run out of Ann Arbor during the COVID year. The entire fan base turned on him. And, and when that happens, what do you do? You go back to your roots. And he changed this entire program. This entire program. Now they're going to move to 24 and 2 since that COVID year. And just think about it. You know, he was starting to flirt with the RPO spread offense a little bit. They were running, you know, a defense that maybe wasn't his, his favorite structure of defense. And then he faced adversity. People call him for his job. And what did he do? Went back to his roots. Yeah, he went back to his roots, all right. He called his brother. He did that. He called his big brother. And he went back to his own offensive roots. He said, we're going to run it. We're going to run it with tight ends, extra linemen. And you know what? I'm going to run my brother's defense. And when you play Michigan, now you play the whole Harbaugh family. You get that Baltimore defense, you get Jim's offense, and look at that, they're coming up with a sack play. This time, it's Oki. Yabi Oki, the Alabama transfer. Well, this has certainly been a great performance for Michigan, there's no doubt, but I gotta say, Ohio State has been fantastic all year long. They coming certainly in, have. Coming into this game, Gus, they had won every single game by double digits. They, they've got a terrific win in the non-conference against Notre Dame. And I know that there's going to be a, a nervy wait here for Ohio State fans, but I do think... I this, do may, this may be a fumble. Hold on, partner, as the officials take a look. Looked like he was thus on Yabi Oki when that ball started to come loose, when he lost control. As they were spinning down to the ground, didn't it look like he was... Watch this. See, see how he's... Yeah, he's never on the ground. The ruling on the field was the runner's progress was stopped. This is not a reviewable play. Third down. Okay, so they, they didn't just call him down, but the progress was stopped. Non-reviewable there. You start looking at Ohio State's chances now toward a playoff picture. And 
is certainly, you know, they've got a couple of really good wins and good non-conference. Over the middle. Incomplete and an interception. Makari Page. And Page comes up with the loose ball. Second turnover of the day for Ohio State. And that will do it with 148 to go in the fourth quarter. Michigan coming into Columbus. They haven't won here since 2000. And they move to 12 and 0 for the first time since they won the national championship back in the late 90s. McCarthy, it's been a coming out party for him this afternoon in the biggest game of his life. Three passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. The Michigan defense has played excellent in the second half. And don't forget, coming up on the Coca-Cola College Football Extra, join Mike Hill and the guys with plenty more coverage of all of the day's action right here from the shoe. Boy, we just couldn't have had two different halves of football. Gus, that was, that was completely different, wasn't it, than what we saw in the first half? Yes, it was. Blake Corum in the game. He started and he will end it. 54 seconds and counting. The Michigan Wolverines executed, playing power football in the second half. Well coached. Dominant. And that will do it. The final score from Columbus, 45 to 23. Michigan.